Morning guys, thank you for joining me today. I am in Wootenwell in South Yorkshire and today's walk will take me along the Trans Pennine Trail up to Wakefield, that's about 12 or 13 miles. Hopefully I'm feeling strong enough for this one today because I woke up not feeling too well this morning but I'm feeling a bit better now and decided to put the boots on and get out there and uh, share another video with you. I'm starting here at Stoutside St Mary's Church in the centre of Wootenwell. This is an area, like much of South Yorkshire, known for its mining and there's a sign at the station just explaining how back in the 1850s there was a mining disaster there in one of the local I think Lundworth Colliery that led to the deaths of 189 miners which was probably one of the worst mining disasters ever to, to hit here in the uh, UK. Uh, it wasn't just uh, men, it was um, men and boys uh, in that accident back in the 1850s but of course the rules about employment were very different then these days the boys will be in school compulsorily until 16 and probably many of them till 18, 21 and beyond but back then it was um, everyone working together so before I get started today there's one other thing I want to see here in Woonwell which is a memorial stone to the Boer War 1899, 1900 time it must be quite unusual, there's plenty of World War One and Two memorials dotted all over the country but a Boer War memorial is something slightly different and I bet there aren't many towns and uh, cities that have Boer War memorials in the country. So I'm going to find that and then I'm going to head off to the trail. It's quite a windy day today so hopefully the audio will be okay and won't have too many problems with the, with the recording. So thank you for joining me, uh, long walk today. This is it, this is the memorial to the Boer War. Unfortunately it's behind scaffolding and railing so uh, it's quite difficult to film today. But hopefully you get an idea of it. it commemorates those that died at Ladysmith, 1899 to 1902. Which is quite an impressive memorial, something different from the World War I, World War II stuff. Well, I'm on my way. I found the Trans Pennine Trail. It's very easy to access from Woonwell. It's lovely and flat along this stretch. It is Easter week now, it's Monday. And Easter comes up at uh, the end of the week. Good Friday, Easter Monday. And it's surprisingly busy on here. I know it's school holidays, but I've already quite a few dog walkers and a group of kids uh, cycle past. Uh, it's quite funny because the kids or want to do high five, so as I'm walking the opposite direction, or kind of high fiving me as they rode past. That was quite an entertaining start to the walk. And it's going to be a bit busier than some of the walks I've done because I'm kind of closer to to towns and uh, there'll be more people about, given given it's Easter week as well. So as I say, starting in Woonwell, heading I think to Cuddeth and Barnsley, and uh, on to Wakefield is the plan. And I'm not sure what to expect today exactly. So normally I do a bit of research when I'm setting out on a walk. Today I haven't really done that, it's been a spur of the moment thing. I've just thought, well I've done quite a lot of Trans Pennine Trail walking in the last week or two so let's try a bit more. And uh, this is a stretch I've never walked before so it's a bit of an unknown quantity. With a bit of luck we'll see some signs, evidence of the old mining days along the way but no guarantees. I say there was that notice board at the station describing a, a disaster, a local disaster back in the 19th century. That sign also said that the ever first uh, documented crystal ball gazing took place in Woomwell, which I did not know. Sometimes to find out about a place you really got to come and visit and check out the local information boards. So we'll see what more today's walk brings but it could be interesting something different anyway something totally new one that I've never done before so join me and uh, this is just the start in one of my previous videos I was walking along the Trans Pennine Trail and I was explaining how it's mainly a route that goes east-west across the north of England 
but there are offshoots that go in a north-south direction so here you've got Wurzburg off to the west which is probably the main route but then you've got this offshoot from uh, Woomwell up to Barnsley and Wakefield which is going north and 14 miles to Wakefield which is even further than I thought it was going to be hopefully I'll complete today's walk it's, it's lovely and flat and not too demanding and uh, quite busy so far with people although it's gone quiet now but I guess with schools being out there's going to be a lot more people around than usual but everybody I've said good morning to so far has said good morning back so people in this part of the world are very friendly I've reached the site of Stairfoot Station a couple of miles south of Barnsley this station was open between the 1850s and 1950s and this rolling stock gauge 060 was used by the trains back in the 19th century this area is now looked after by a local heritage group and there's a sad story going back to 1870 when an accident occurred a number of goods coaches up at uh, Barnsley were being shunted on the railway and they came loose rolled back down the track and collided with a stationary train that was full of passengers led to the deaths of 15 people and a large number of injuries and it just goes to show how unregulated many industries were back in the 19th century so there was that mining disaster back in Woomwell led to 189 deaths and then another 15 in a railway accident in uh, I think 1870 just at this point and thankfully health and safety has come in and there have been a lot of changes in the labour rules and as I said earlier children don't uh, go into the world of work at age 9, 10, 11 anymore they stay in school a lot longer than that it's been interesting filming along here it's quite busy and each time I try to get the camera out talk about uh, the events at Stairfoot a crowd of cyclists rolls past <laughs> and I have to stop and start again so this was the third attempt to tell you about Stairfoot station and yeah success at last right we walk on Barnes is a couple of miles from here next stop I'm passing through the outskirts of Barnsley now. The Trans Pennine Trail has forked and looks like I'm going to be missing the town centre. It is April and April, May have got to be two of the best walking months of the year. The days are getting longer and warmer. There's lots of bird song, as you can hear but the trees aren't yet laden with leaves like they are by July, August so you can often spot the birds and other wildlife before there's so much foliage you can't see what's happening this is a lovely stretch of walk, very peaceful just me and the bird song Okay, well it's time to come clean about the this section of Trans Pennine Trail. I got as far as Cuddeth and then the path entered, kind of went into the town. And it's not beauty all the way, as I'm now going to demonstrate. I've had to detour to walk around three sides of this huge factory, because it's the only way to go. I'm now nine miles from Wakefield. Thankfully the walk around this place was only a short detour. I don't know what this place does exactly. I've not researched it. But it covers a huge site. Thankfully, the path continues along here. And according to the last sign, this is now nine miles to Wakefield. So I'm on my way, there's still a while to go. 
My criticism of this section of the walk is real lack of seating areas. Anybody who wants to stop and have a have a break, there's very little, no obvious facilities at all. I guess it's a section of the trail that's not visited by huge numbers of people. It was very busy earlier on around Wormwell, but there's hardly anyone in, uh, around here. Um, hopefully I can find a nice spot for for lunch and somewhere to sit down because I'm getting a bit foot sore now, ready for a break. At least it's turned out to be a nice day. Okay, now I guess I'm going right here and not left on this path. Not brilliantly signposted here. I'd say this looks like the main path. Onwards. That walk through the industrial area was worth it for this section. This is the home to Barnsley Flying Club apparently. Good spot for model aeroplanes, lots of green space. Quality of the paths is not so good along here. In the early section it was ideal for cyclists and people with motability scooters, but now it's become quite rough underfoot. Some sections of narrow paths around the factory buildings and then grit and stone surfaces nowhere near as good as what I was walking on earlier I mean fine for walking but cycling a bit more of a challenge you wouldn't really, you wouldn't really want to bring a motability scooter along along some of these sections it's a bit steeper in places and it's much rougher surfaces I just don't think you'd manage And I'm still looking for a lunch spot. I think Barnsley Council or the Trans Pennine Trail people need to maybe work on that because this is a long section where there's nothing, just the path. Very picturesque here. Oh, this must be the uh, railway line. Well, it obviously is. I wonder if this is the main one up to Leeds. Probably Wakefield, Leeds, Sheffield line. And there's no one out and about through here. It's a good long time since I last saw a, a dog walker or anybody. Well, this isn't really the main section of the Trans Pennine Trail. It does run across from the west to the east coast. And this is one of those offshoots that go in slightly different directions. So there's a trek that takes you up to York. There's one that will go south to Chesterfield and this one up towards Wakefield and then on to Leeds. So this is not the main route but interesting in its own way and I don't mind a bit of rural walking as sorry urban walking as I've said before in previous videos I'm just as happy to see a bit of the modern world new industries or old industries it's all good but at this time of the year it's nice to just hear the sounds of nature the sounds of our workaday world. This is very narrow on here. You're definitely not going to get a scooter down here, it'd be a real struggle. And if you had a problem you couldn't turn around or anything, you'd be completely trapped. I feel absolutely fenced in here. <laughs> Admittedly the fence on the left hand side has disintegrated and fallen apart but Railway lines on the right, so I can understand that fence, but this is a 
bit claustrophobic. I've seen a couple of butterflies today and heard uh, woodpecker as well, so very encouraging. It's about 14 degrees Celsius today, I think. I'm supposed to get up to about 17, maybe 18 later in the week, so Easter's looking like something wonderful this year. So I finally found a rather nice lunch spot just off the trail. I think this area is old industrial that's been converted going back to wildlife gradually. Little area of reed bed here. One or two ducks hiding in amongst the reeds as well. I saw them earlier but they've gone now. Bit of a hidden gem this one. If you watched my previous video when I was walking from, I think from Wortley to Penniston, I passed one of these mile markers that were put in by the National Cycle Network in conjunction with the Royal Bank of Scotland. This one's seven miles to Wakefield, seven miles to Barnsley. So I'm pretty much halfway to complete on this walk. There are a thousand of these according to the sign across the country. I've only found two of them so far, so I've got a long way to go yet. Only 998 more to go. And I'm actually walking alongside of a canal now. I guess we'll run up to Wakefield and then probably on to Leeds. No shortage of canals in this part of the world. I've done canal walking in the last couple of walks when I was out around Elzica and on my way to the RSPB reserve at Old Moor. It's nice to be walking alongside water. This is the first time pretty much today that I've done that. Mostly it's been through fields and these kind of semi-industrial areas. This section of the path is owned by Royston, I think Fishing Club, which is why there are all these little jetties they want to catch fish but the rules are you can catch them but you must return them to the water you're not allowed to take them away with you and the sign says if you do take the fish away you can be banned for life from fishing along here so that's quite strict and looks after the wildlife but ensures the fishermen get a get a fair go so this is a lovely stretch away from the industry and along the canal side, favourite kind of walk. There's a handy notice board here showing the route I've come today. Wombwell's off the map, but that stair foot where I filmed at the station then followed the line here, detours around these glassworks, the industrial area, along the railway line here. And I'm now in Royston, which is just here, and on to Wakefield eventually, off the map. There's lots of wildlife on this canal, oh, there's a mallard down there. Interesting story on the notice board that back in 1861, one of the barges loaded with coal or corn, I'm not sure which, was caught up in an accident. There was subsidence along the canal and the water level rose and the boat and the crew found themselves forced off the canal and into an adjoining field and the force of the water moved them about 400 metres along this field. The notice doesn't say anything about whether there are any casualties or not. Hopefully there weren't. But it just goes to show the subsidence was caused by by mining, undermining the uh, the ground obviously and causing the canal to 
become damaged with uh, almost catastrophic results. But it was quite an informative notice board, a great route map and lots of useful information. And I've heard so many birds along this section. Apparently there are water vole here today. Sorry, water vole here. But I haven't seen any today. I'd be lucky to get to, to see any of those things. I've seen them in the past, but not very often. Okay, I've got about five or six miles to go, I think. And my feet are holding up pretty well. So, I will get this walk done. I had some doubts earlier this morning, but I'm sure I'll complete it now. This has turned into a lovely afternoon walk now. I'm still on the edge of the canal, now disused. There's some hope that it might be reopened in the future, but from what I've seen today, that's going to require a huge amount of work and quite a lot of money. So that could be a long-term plan. The canal was opened in 1799 and ran for decades until the railways took over. Midland Railway came through. That was the line that runs parallel to the canal. That railway line is now disused as well. I thought it might be in use, but not a single train has gone by today. And it doesn't look like any do. Having a, had a closer inspection of it, it looks like it's out of action. Close to this village of uh, Royston that I've just, just passed through, there is a nature reserve called Rabbit Ings. I didn't know this, but apparently the reserve is supposed to contain all five species of native British owls. So that would be tawny owl, barn owl, that little owl. Is there a long-eared owl as well, I think? And one other. Um, so if you're into your bird watching, then that must be the place to come. I wonder if they've still got all the species now or whether they are suffering habitat loss like lots of other British birds are. Warming seems to be taking its effect in uh, parts of the country. But yeah, I'd never even heard of rabbit ings before. <laughs> and uh, before today I didn't know it was a haven for owls. So, yeah, live and learn. It's been nice to come on a walk without any advanced planning or research, just doing it. And, uh, and it's a voyage of discovery on the way. Absolutely no idea what I'm going to encounter and what information I'm going to come across. I've not found a lot today about the old mining industry. Um, in this area, but there's been plenty of other interesting stuff along the way. The things that have been most fascinating have been the stories of some of those disasters, the train and canal, and there was one mining tragedy as well. Um, just goes to show how, how industries used to be run uh, back in the Victorian times before anyone had dreamt up health and safety. This walk seems to be taking me longer than I expected. I've still got about five miles to go with various detours and filming. But it's been a great uh, weather day for it. And this section along the canal has, has been a highlight. I'm on the last leg of today's walk. This is Walton Colliery Park. I've just passed through the little village of Walton, then had to do a bit of road working to find the turn to the park. 
there's a few sections of road walking on the trail uh, just two or three but they're all quite short so it's not too much of a nuisance going onto the roads and they're fairly quiet this park used to be the site of old Charleston colliery employed around 2,000 men and I think closed about uh, 40 years ago or so since which time the area has been converted to nature like many collieries it's had its uh, sad story back in the 1950s there was an explosion on the site and the loss of life five people I believe died in in that explosion it's a story repeated all over the coal mining area sadly a dangerous mixture of coal and narrow spaces and equipment and mining it's a dangerous cocktail I've certainly done more than 14 miles today what with various detours and route checking and uh, I'm quite foot sore now it's a while since I've done this kind of distance I'll be glad to be into Wakefield for a well deserved pint but I should think uh, another hour perhaps less than an hour and I'll be home and hosed fingers crossed so this is a view of the of the park hard to under believe that at one time this was all kind of industrial mining and an area of slag heaps and wasteland but it's like the area around Old Moor I visited on a previous walk at one time that was heavily industrial and uh, is now a thriving reserve for for wildlife including bitterns one of our rarer birds apparently they've got uh, a cuckoo on site here I've not heard a cuckoo yet this year I think there might be woodpeckers kingfishers to be found if you if you get really lucky so onwards and it's getting quite late in the day now I think it's something like half past four now so Glad to be finished on this one. Okay, success at last. I finally arrived in Wakefield, and this is the chapel bridge behind me and the Chantry Church. And uh, this dates back to about 1340 1350, which has been restored in later days. And I'm very glad to be here because I lost my way at the end of the walk. Unbelievable losing my way as I'm coming into Wakefield. It's a sizable city, I shouldn't be getting lost here. It's about half past five now, it's been a long walking day, glad to be done. I bumped into a guy who helped me out with some directions, so thank you to him. He was heading into the village of Heath, close by, for a beer. And uh, I think a beer is what I need as well. I'm just going to switch the camera around so you can see the, the view here. Nice spot to finish the walk. I think this is the, is it the Hebel and Calder navigation running through here. And there's a grey heron down there, fishing. And that's it, that is it guys. Thank you for watching today. Any questions or comments, leave them and I'll try and get back to you. I just need to catch a train back to Woomwell and jump in the car home. Thank you again and bye for now. Well, I'm home from my walk. I wanted to provide a quick postscript to today's walk. I arrived in Wakefield much later than I expected because the walk took longer than planned and then I only had a few minutes before my train home I didn't have a chance to wander around the city and show you the sites I was going to show you the Hepworth Museum Barbara Hepworth is one of the most famous daughters of Wakefield and I was going to head for the cathedral talk a bit about Wakefield's history it was a key 
location for both the War of the Roses and for the English Civil War. But I never really got into that, never had time to go through all that. So I'll try and cover that in another, vi another video in future when I get back to Wakefield and uh, spend a bit more time there. But thank you again for watching. Um, I've walked so far today, I'm really foot sore. I got caught by the sun as well, so I'm going to need some recovery time after the walk this time. <laughs> that was enjoyable, but hard work today. And I'll catch you all soon. And thanks again.